Hi, I'm Tanya Fox, and today we're going to be talking about Angelman Syndrome. Angelman Syndrome is a genetic neurological disorder first discovered in 1965 by Dr. Harry Angelman. He first described three children with the characteristics now known as Angelman Syndrome, or AS. He noted that they all exhibited a stiff, jerky gait, and they did not speak and displayed excessive laughter and were prone to seizures. AS was first identified in North America in the early 1980s. The condition was considered to be extremely rare at the time it was first discovered. However, AS is now believed to be more common. Perhaps thousands of AS cases have gone undiagnosed or misdiagnosed as cerebral palsy, autism, or other childhood disorders. AS has been reported throughout the world and has been identified among various racial groups. However, the majority of cases seem to occur in Caucasians. The exact number of people with AS is unknown, but the estimate is between 1 in 15,000 and 1 in 20,000 people have Angelman Syndrome. There are distinguishing physical and developmental characteristics that set Angelman Syndrome apart from many other disabilities. Individuals with Angelman Syndrome often have abnormalities of the head and facial area that include a small head, deeply set eyes, a large living, protruding tongue. People with AS have impaired control of voluntary movements, which results in jerky arm movements and stiffness when walking. Individuals with AS can experience different types of seizures, which usually onset around three years of age. Another unique characteristic of people with AS are incidents of unprovoked, inappropriate laughter. Another common characteristic of people with AS is an absence or near absence of speech. There are many other physical symptoms that go along with Angelman Syndrome. Easily excitable personality, hand flapping movements, and a shortened attention span. Developmental delays are perhaps one of the largest issues with Angelman Syndrome. The developmental delay is apparent between 6 and 12 months of age. Growth motor milestones are delayed and sitting usually occurs after 12 months and walking can be delayed until 3 or 5 years of age. Physical therapy is helpful in improving movement. Sometimes bracing or surgical intervention is required to properly align the legs so that walking may occur. During adolescence, puberty may also be delayed one to three years. However, good physical health is often apparent with those with Angelman Syndrome. The severity and frequency of seizures may even improve with age. In some children with AS, hypopigmentation occurs, and this can be so severe that albinism is suspected. The skin is very lightly colored, and is sensitive to the sun, so appropriate sunscreen is necessary. The diagnosis of this disorder um, is harder to find because the developmental problems are nonspecific during birth or infancy. So Angelman syndrome is usually not recognized at this time. AS is most often diagnosed between ages 3 and 7 because this is the time span when characteristic behaviors become the most prominent. For most individuals with Angelman Syndrome, the disorder appears to be caused by deletion and or disruption of a particular gene. Some familial cases have been reported, but not every child in a family will have Angelman Syndrome. It has recently been discovered that assistive reproductive technology, such as in vitro fertilization, have been associated with some cases of Angelman Syndrome. There is a variety of treatment methods for AS. Those with AS generally require seizure medication. Speech and physical therapy is also usually necessary. There is no one certain drug therapy for Angelman Syndrome. Occupational therapy and behavior management can also be used to help the child with AS. It really goes on a case-by-case -case basis to determine the appropriate interventions for your child. Behavior modification is an effective method that used to improve the abilities of children with AS. Some parents do a big bear hug. This tends to calm down the child. Usually a minute or two is fine. This technique may also be effective for crying fits. 
Another technique that can be helpful is a weighted vest. This gives stability and also provides a soothing effect. Communication is a major issue for those with Angelman syndrome. Children with Angelman syndrome seem to have much greater receptive language than expressive ability. Individuals with AS are generally unable to speak but may have the ability to learn to communicate in other ways. Sign language and technology-assisted communication devices are common forms of nonverbal communication techniques that can be used with people with AS. However, it will take some time and training before individuals with AS become proficient in alternate communication methods. In other instances, a single apparent word said by the child with AS, such as mama, may develop around 10 to 18 months, but is often used infrequently and indiscriminately without meaning. The nonverbal language skills of children with AS vary greatly, with the most advanced children being able to learn some sign language and picture-based communication boards. For safety concerns, parents may teach a child a way to signal an immediate danger, such as a scream or a whistle. Laughter. It is not known why laughter is so frequent in AS. The laughter in AS seems mostly to be an expressive motor event. Although children with AS experience a variety of emotions, apparent happiness predominates. Seizures tend to occur in the time between sleep and wakefulness, but may occur at any time. Seizure and sleep deprivation often cause most seizures. Most seizures are brief, lasting a few seconds to a few minutes, and seizures may be difficult to recognize or distinguish from the child's usual tremors and movements. Staring spells may also be confused with seizures. During these spells, the child may be unresponsive to calling his or her name, but usually comes around when touched. Abnormal sleep can also be an issue that parents need to deal with in treating a child with AS. Administration of melatonin one hour before bed has been shown to be helpful in some children, but this should not be given in the middle of the night if a child wakes up. Benadryl may also be helpful if excessive wakefulness disrupts home life. Educational needs need to be considered with ch children with AS. The classroom setting should be structured in its physical design and its curriculum so that the child with AS can adjust to the school environment. Individualization and flexibility are important factors. Consistent behavior modification in the school and at home can allow the child with AS to perform well and learn toilet training skills and self-help skills such as eating and dressing. The prognosis of people with AS is very good. People with Angelman syndrome have the same life expectancy as those without AS. Further, AS symptoms and developmental issues do not typically get worse with age. Early diagnosis and intervention specific to the child greatly increases the quality of life for the individual with Angelman syndrome. Young adults with AS usually have adequate social skills and respond to most personal reactions and cues. Individuals with AS can establish rewarding friendships, communicate their feelings, participate in group activities, do household chores, and enjoy recreational activities. Early intervention is key. The early intervention program for birth to three may be administered by local school districts, private organizations, or throughout or through community mental health agencies. What the family can do. The first step in successful treatment is to understand as much as possible about your child with Angelman syndrome. For example, if your child has seizures, it is important to note and identify what kind of seizures. The next step is to formulate your goals of treatment. An understanding of the limitations, risks, and advantages of medicines and other treatments is crucial. There are many resources for the family, such as the Angelman Syndrome Foundation, the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development, and the New Horizons Unlimited. So with the proper tools and information and support from the family, community, and educators and other professionals, Angelman Syndrome can be overcome.